Okay, this video is for Alan. One of my viewers wanted me to make a video of the engine compartment on my 78 Corvette and he also had some questions about the carburetor and the vacuum uh, hookups, the vacuum lines. So right now I'm in the middle of a project. Uh, I'm working on the AC system and uh, I've got the AC compressor removed as you can see and so that I can access this area here where the receiver dehydrator goes and uh, some of the other plumbing I've got the uh, overflow tank removed and it's just it's it doesn't go in this position but it's just sitting here for now out of my way so I'm gonna do an overview of the engine compartment first and then I'll explain the vacuum hookup there's the AC bracket I think the 78 newers take the R4 compressor the short little compressor it sits up here high here's the slotted bracket so you can tighten your belt compressor sits right in here most of the plumbing runs right along this top edge and then it goes down in between the radiator tank there's a little area there I don't think you can see it in the video but where the liquid line goes out to the evaporator I'm sorry for the uh, for the condenser that sits out front I'm yet to remove the hood uh, so that I can clean this area up and put my condenser in. You can't put them in with the hood installed. They go right out front there. You can see a little overview of the engine. Um, that's the new evaporator. It's been installed for quite a while now. And under here, one of my other videos, I showed where I installed a universal vacuum reservoir. That's for the internal uh, dash or um, AC plenum HVAC system so that uh, all of your dampers work they're vacuum they have vacuum servos and this stores vacuum so when your engine uh, has a low vacuum situation like a high load that your dampers will continue to operate this is an add-on here two fuses for the two cooling fans that I have this comes directly off the starter, off the feed from the battery. And down by the starter I have two fusible links as well. This is another little uh, barrier strip I brought up. It has switched DC from the ignition switch and a constant 12 volt DC. And I added this for some of it's for the fan control and anything in the future that might need switch DC or uh, battery power. I've got it pretty much as close as I can get it to factory. I don't have the doghouse around the uh, distributor, the EMI shield. I removed it because it's, uh, it's a cheap plastic thing on these. And part, part of it was missing, so I just removed it. Give you a shot of the carburetor. It's a quick fuel SS650 with the uh, down leg boosters and mechanical secondaries and it has electric choke. Okay, the two sensors you see there in the water neck, that's for my fan controllers, which I made a bracket for them. One controls the fan. Uh, the, the controller you see on the left there controls the fan on the left and then the one on the right controls the fan on the right and I've got them staged so at one temperature the left fan comes on and then as the engine warms up more the other fan comes on if needed and then when the AC is on it overrides both the controllers and turns the fans on another little barrier strip there that you can make some connections to go around to the other side of the car See another little shot of the fans, how I ran the power to them. These vacuum lines here run around to the vacuum operated uh, headlights. 
And then on the 650 quick fuel, I'm also using a JEGS um, throttle bracket, which is working out pretty nice. One of my other videos I did show, I complained a little bit about these springs. I replaced these with some lighter springs. They came with, with two springs that were really, really heavy. So I removed them and um, ordered uh, two springs, a little two lighter springs and put them on there. This carb is uh, very similar to a Holley 4150. It has the secondary metering block. It also has the uh, four corner idle mixture adjustment. You can notice all the idle and high speed air bleeds are adjustable, or replaceable. These are very nice carburetors and this one here was just about perfect right out of the box. Okay, so now for the questions I had on my video from Alan, uh, I run my fuel just a little bit lower than midpoint. You can see this little arrow that's cast in. I run mine just slightly lower on both primary and secondaries. Uh, this is aluminum carburetor, so it gets a lot of heat into it, although my heads don't have a crossover. So I would imagine it runs a little cooler. Than, uh, than most, but uh, I have a little bit of problem um, in hot weather. When I shut this down, it doesn't want to start right back up. Uh, a little percolation, I guess. Um, but that's kind of the nature of the beast for a carburetor, especially aluminum one. And with these fans and the way that the, the radiators are tilted in these Corvettes, you don't get a lot of airflow over the engine although I really don't have any problem with it getting hot or anything. I have a copper brass three, uh, three row radiator and then the two spow fans in there and a custom um, fan shroud that I made that you can see in one of my other videos. It's working out quite nice. Okay, so let's talk about how the vacuum lines are hooked up. There really isn't too many on this. On this quick fuel, you have one here. That's your timed port. You're going to get vacuum on here when the engine's off idle. At idle, you don't hardly get anything there. That's what they call the timed port, or it's ported vacuum. It's vacuum only when the throttle is off, off idle. And then the manifold vacuum, which is vacuum all the time, comes off of one of the ones underneath on the base plate of the carburetor, there's two there. But uh, I think only one of those is a full-time vacuum and I think the other one is another ported vacuum. So for my vacuum advance, I'm using manifold vacuum. As you can see, it comes out here and goes into a Y. One of these goes over to the vacuum advance. The other one runs back here to a T. And the T, from the T, there's another line that runs here that goes over to that reservoir that I showed you that operates all your HVAC system dampers and then the other side of the T goes into a check valve which leads around all the way to the front of the car and you can get schematics of these uh, vacuum lines um, for your in fact I think I have one if, if you need it I can probably figure out a way to put it on one of my videos but uh, those lines come around to the front to the headlight vacuum servos yeah, it's gonna get a little crazy here with the camera but these servos here are double acting servos that open and close your headlights and then there's two relays up under here uh, see if I can show it to you You can see them right there. That's the only thing that I needed to replace on mine to get my headlights working. Those relays were like $50 a piece or something. So what they do is actually turn on the vacuum to these big guys here and either lift or lower the headlight doors. And like I said, there is a schematic online for that that you can find. Also on the 78 Corvette, you'll notice this cross member here at the very front of the frame 
And you'll also see a vacuum line going into it. That is the vacuum reservoir for the headlights. Earlier models of 78 Corvettes had a large, uh, I'm sorry, earlier Corvettes had a large reservoir uh, placed somewhere else. I don't know where they put them. This is actually a welded in tube across the front of the frame and they use that as the vacuum reservoir and I've heard people talk about the frame cracking up front and it can't hold a vacuum. Uh, I'm not having that problem yet but my car is in pretty good shape so I can't say what you'd run into with that. Okay. And I don't know what else I need to show here. That's how I ran my system. I guess I could say one other thing. Uh, you're, in most cases, you're going to want to have your vacuum advance on your distributor attached to your manifold vacuum, which is the one closest on this side on the base plate of the carburetor. That gives you maximum advance and should improve efficiency at idle and off idle. And then when the engine is under heavy load, when there's no vacuum in the manifold, uh, the vacuum advance will go away and the mechanical advance will take over and it will prevent any uh, detonation. And this system's working out really great for me, but in some cases uh, you have to try both the ported vacuum and the, and the manifold vacuum for your advance and make up your mind for yourself which one works the best for you. In my case, I have a, um, a lot of overlap on my cam, and running mine to the manifold vacuum seems to smooth out the idle a little better. Okay, well I hope this answers all your questions. Let me know if it doesn't. I'll be glad to make another video. Thanks for watching.